Uh, let's go to number two. Thomas from Savage, Minnesota. <laughs> How would you like to be a pacifist? <laughs> and a, a conscientious objector in Savage, Minnesota. Uh, Dick Cheney this week referred to the Obama administration as an unmitigated disaster. Yeah, uh, I agree. Um, which begs the question, what would be a mitigated disaster? Well, maybe, maybe we can find some mitigation with Barack Obama, but it surprises me that the mitigation that I find with him does not make him an unmitigated disaster with his devotees. He kills a lot more terrorists than I ever thought he would. He kept Gitmo open. He kept the Patriot Act in tow. He upped drone use. And uh, he has killed a couple bad guy American citizens. Uh, well, one in particular, Alawaki, with a drone from space. And, uh, you know, they always talked about how we were imperialists and warmongers and hateful and bloodthirsty. And they said that we would tilt people back on a board and pour water up their nose. Caleb Sheikh Mohammed, who spills his guts more frequently than uh, John Hurt in a 24-hour alien cycling. And uh, that we were evil to do that. No, I don't know. Bring Alawaki back. They blew his head off and say, would you prefer being waterboarded? I think he might. I know it's bad. I think he might. So uh, it is mitigated to that degree. And, uh, and it's nice to see the left, as I've often said, on board with the bloodthirsty tactics. Now, I hope they don't start, you know, killing American citizens who they just disagree with, as opposed to the Alawakis of the world. But I would say that mitigates it for me. And when people say, is there any part of Obama that you're happy with, I would be disingenuous if I just did the across-the-board wine. Yeah, he's a killer machine, and he's got the liberals in this country to concede that they're killing machines, too, and that the only reason they weren't killing machines is because they didn't like Bush. So that mitigates it for me to some degree. I know now that we're... If a terrorist sticks his head up, we're going to whack them all up, you know? And uh, so that mitigates it for me to some degree. What would be better? Uh, would that be better? All right, I think I've answered that. Something for Obama to shoot for in a second administration, if heaven forbid that should come to pass. Well, here's my feeling on Obama. He seems so piquant and so, I don't know, um, disapproving of my side of the political aisle that I don't sense in a second term when, hypothetically, he had the horse into the barn and never had to go for election again, that would lead to him being less nasty with people who don't agree with him, i.e. the Tea Party who I'm shocked, I always say to this day, that he never took one meeting with them, even if the meeting was contentious, just to say, we don't agree, but I'm your president. But never to meet with them once, for God's sakes. We meet with anybody, for God's sakes. They were talking about meeting with Akademijad without any stipulation at some point. He won't meet with some American citizens who just have a different take on it, and that take is not spend more than we take in. And that's enough to make him not even want to meet with them. Do I think in a second term that the, that would be ameliorated, or do I think that would be amplified? Sadly, with this man, I'd say amplified. I don't sense that he's a conciliatory figure. I don't sense he's the, the post-triviality uh, guy that he pitched himself as. It seems to me he keeps score, and when you're as smart as he is, you keep score accurately. And uh, he almost seems to have... Uh, it's like an Ubermensch, uh, you know, sort of feeling. It's Nietzschean to me, his disdain for those he perceives to be the non-intellectuals. Unfortunately for him, the non-intellectuals make a lot of the money in this country and bust a lot of the ass, and he disdains them perpetually at his own peril, I would think, in this next election. But I don't know. I'll be, sh you know, we'll find out about the country. Somebody's going to be shocked. Fifty percent of us are going to have our jaws hit the ground the next day when we go, fuck. We went down that path. And you, can you imagine how petrified you'll be? Literally, I'm going to start figuring my plan out. If it, if it turns out that the bust in your ass in this country uh, is uh, viewed negatively as of November 7th, I'm out as far as work goes. I'll, can, I'll do all my uh, obligations contractually, and then I get in the other line. I get my hand out. Uh, I don't do. I'm not in this line anymore. Here, I'm in this line. That's the way the country's going to play. I fulfill all contractual obligations, and then, uh, well, Ayn Rand, a genius. I shrug. Hey, but 
Enjoy these samples of the bathroom sessions, a weekly video available only to members of the DMZ, the Dennis Miller Zone on DennisMillerRadio.com. <laughs>